This is a, a tiny bit of a mess. It's it's all right though. Okay, they got it. They got it set up. All right, are we gonna? Wait. I'm hoping they're they're both going. There might be a bit of delay, as I mentioned. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Dynamite's right. on their way. Uh, Valley should be hopefully soon. Whew. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Minute. All right. <laughs> Finally. Actually, no. We to make sure both timers start. Okay. All right. That's Dynamite's that's timer's that's working. Nice. And Valley's is yes right. as well. Nice. Whew. All right. Now we can uh, explain the same thing as we explained last time. So, uh, we mentioned the inventory drops. Those are one thing that you're going to be seeing throughout the run. Another thing that is going to be quite uh, common with this run is the lever skips, which is a type of trick that you can do because, once again, uh, Team Cherry messed something up in the code, so we're going to abuse that. Uh, what it means is that we can hit like gates with levers uh, blocking our path. We can hit them from the unintended side. So we can hit them from the side that we should not be able to go through by uh, reaching the lever through walls or floors in different ways. Uh, and the main one that we're going to be abusing is using the dash slash ability uh, or nail arts, Gosh. which is it has like a really long range. So we're going to use that to get the shade soul ability without even needing to do the fights or get the key at all. So we can get it quite early as we rush on our way to soul sanctum. Um, but uh, it's gonna that's gonna be one of the main uses. And of and course, that's... there's the one in the the watcher's spire that you've probably seen before in other runs where we use it to skip a little segment where we have to fight a uh, a guy or like a, a a guard and it loses about a minute. And that's the uh, main difference between this run and the run on current patch, which also has a tournament going at the same time, is that in current patch, there is no um, there's no lever skips because Team Cherry fixed their mistakes. Exactly. So uh, in current patch, you would have to actually get the key and the geo for that before you even get Shade Soul. So the routing is is quite different. Uh, like, unlike most categories, Valley missing the double spike, getting one and getting a relatively clean cleanup. Yeah, if you get that dynamite. if you get that nice cleanup, then you're not losing that much time to the double spike, which is yeah. pretty fortunate. So what both runners were trying to do with there was hit a stalact uh, stalactite falling from the ceiling uh, at an angle, so that it uh, flew through and killed both of the uh, the aspids that spawned into the arena. And they have like a it's quite a precise trick. They have quite a uh, uh, a tight lineup to do. Uh, and it's not too uncommon to miss it, and it only loses like three seconds if you handle it properly. Uh, and they're both on their way. Uh, Dynamite's unfortunately missing the statue pogo, but gets a nice backup with the uh, the bench fly that was there. Uh, yes, yeah, so both runners are going now to the first thing in the game. If you've seen pretty much any speedrun, they all have the same beginning, going and get getting uh, Vengeful Spirit to get out of the Forgotten Crossroads and into Green Path. So um, both runners are going to be following this path, which should be pretty once, consistent for both of them. Yeah. Once you do a bit of this fight, you're going to see a dev intended shortcut that allows you to skip the rest of it. Uh, so what you're going to be seeing is after they knock the boss down the first time, they're going to line themselves up with the wall and break it because the game's game just lets you do that, and they can just stroll on out without having to finish the fight. Uh, so it's a bit of a time save, and if you're wondering uh, why we do that, and the fact that we will not be picking up the City Crest, we're gonna be getting to the City of Tears in a very different way, uh, abusing another game mechanic, which is a theme that is quite uh, common in speedruns. And um, I think uh, Dynamite uh, neglected to put on the load normalizer, which has also been a common theme in this tournament. But uh, hopefully that's what the first round is for, getting all the um, kinks out of the system. And hopefully having a, everything set up all right for the rest of the tournament. Yeah, it shouldn't matter too much. It's just like a, a visual thing. So the lo load normalizer is a thing that makes sure that all of our loads uh, are equally long. I think it's set to two seconds. Uh, it's just to make the viewing experience better, since the timer uh, like filters away the load time. 
in the speed run. So Valley has himself a bit of a lead here, uh, but that can all change pretty quickly. Yeah, it's and definitely in this run. They now have the first ability of the game, the Vengeful Spirit, which is a both like a tool and a combat uh, weapon, I guess. Mainly the the latter, but you're going to be seeing it used in quite an interesting way. So the um, the Vengeful Spirit takes 33 soul to use, and the soul is what you see in the the meter at the top. You see there, it has the little circle. And it fills up by increments of 11 when you use your nail to slash at an enemy. So there's kind of this mechanic that you have to kind of balance, uh, like going close up and then using your spells. And you can also use your soul to focus, uh, which pretty much heals you. It also costs just as much as a spell. And uh, they're on our way. They're on their way to the second area of the game called Green Path. Uh, which in we which you'll we be seeing, before. yeah. In which you will be seeing the first uh, little how do how do I put this? The creative usage of the vengeful spirits in a set of skips called fireball skips, and what those are is pretty much us using the backwards propulsion that the vengeful spirit uh, spell uses, like what that it causes when you uh, when you like use it to push themselves back and do longer jumps by. You're going to see Valley attempted here. Jumping, turning around at the axis, at the peak of their jump, and then firing a fireball to push themselves back slightly, which yeah. gives them a bit of more jump distance that they normally wouldn't be able to do. There are three of them in this area. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's good to see both runners get the first one. I wouldn't say it's a... It's a difficult trick, but it's definitely one that you can mess up very easily if you're not paying close enough attention. Yeah, more fireball nervous. skips are they are quite finicky, especially when you're uh, just starting out. It took me quite a while to get used to them personally, uh, and I still do mess them up on like pretty regularly. Dynamite gets the second one quite neatly. That's good to see. And Valley gets it as well. Very nice. That one is the one that kind of is the worst if you mess it up. It does have a backup by using an enemy to uh, to nail bounce or pogo on. Uh, which does give you a little bit of height, but it loses a bit of time. Dynamite attempts the second one, but doesn't get it. They're going to have to do a short little detour here to go mm, around Valley, the original way. Valley, Valley does end up getting it. Yeah. yeah. He misses the detour as well. This is minor time loss. Nothing too crazy in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, but, uh, it's, uh, it's fine. This can all, like, it can all flip later. We'll see how it ends up being. Uh, Valley seems to have a uh, around a 30 second lead over Dynamite right now as they're going into this first Moss Knight arena. And we're going to the second boss of the game and the first one we actually like fight to the end called Hornets, which will give us our dash ability, which is going to be quite useful. Uh, it'll make us a lot faster, allow us to... Uh, like have a bit more control in combats, and, and it, um, it, it will let us into into the third area of the game called the fungal wastes, which we will get the wall cling ability, which is pretty much the last main ability of the game, uh, and it is what opens up almost the entire kingdom for uh, for us to explore. Yep. So uh, we're gonna see the runners take on the two moss knights now, which shouldn't be too much of a problem for both of them and uh, make their way to Hornet, which is the, um, I'd say the first real thing that uh, differentiates good runners and really good runners is their boss fights. And uh, we're going to see hopefully a very good boss fight for both of them. Yeah. And the reason they got those two Moss Knights that you saw them just pick up is because we need Geo. Uh, Geo is the number you see in the top left along with the health and soul. And it is pretty much the game's currency, and we need it for a couple of things. Uh, mainly, stag stations, which are fast travel points, and also uh, tolls and a bench toll, which unlocks a bench, which are the game's save points. And uh, the benches are going to be quite important, because they work as save points, but 
like w that means we can warp back to them. You're going to be seeing Valley just quit out after getting the dash ability, and so does Dynamite. Uh, this will spawn you back at the bench when you load back into your save, while the game still saves both, uh, like it saves all of the progression you made uh, up to that point. So we can pretty much use it to uh, to warp back to places a lot faster, so they don't so we don't have to backtrack as much. Uh, which is going to make it a very important tool. The quit outs are going to be used quite heavily in this speedrun and most other speedruns as well. Uh, yeah, so uh, as Chad said, about a 50 second time difference right now. And that's basically just due to movement and um, some benches that Dynamite has taken. Nothing. And there hasn't been any major up, mistakes. Uh, the fireball part. skip. The second oh, and one. the fireball skip, yeah. No, sorry, the third one. I can't think. <laughs> So you're going to be seeing a lot of uh, inventory drop usage from both of them. Uh, pretty much just to fall through this long room faster. Did I see Valley go for the static slash there? I might have. I don't know. I wasn't looking too, too properly. They're both getting themselves some soul. They're going to need to get a bit more geo here. Uh, so there are a couple of rocks that they're going to hit on the way. Just do a, a bit of a short little detour for that to just make sure that they have enough for all the stuff that they need. The main geo uh, requirement that you're going to be seeing coming forth is, first of all, Shaman Stone, which is the most powerful charm in the game. The charms are like equipables that you can use to enhance your, your loadouts and make yourself more powerful in different ways. Uh, and Shaman Stone is one that upgrades the damage of your spells, which are going to be our main damage outputs in the runs. Uh, and uh, uh, Now we're going to be seeing both runners go for a trick called E-Pogo, which you pogo on the explosion of those little Sporg things. Both of them get it. both get it very neatly. Nice. Yeah. No damage, and thanks right you. right here in this room is the wall cling ability called Mantis Claw. Uh, Valley is going for a setup strat with the Mantises to pogo up very neatly. He gets it, and Dynamite didn't quite get the the manipulation, but managed to to get up anyway. So that's good. So uh, uh, as Blue was saying before, the second thing that both runners are going to be using their Geo for is the upgrade that we were talking about before called Dash Slash, which allows them to you to uh, do lever skips in places where they weren't able to in the first place. It has a very, very long range, so we're going to use that to uh, do a couple lever skips throughout the runs. Uh, mainly this one to get Shade Soul very early, which is normally an ability that you would get very late. It's an upgrade to the Vengeful Spirits, and it lets you have a very, very high damage output. Especially if you can, you can get the Fireball to double hit enemies. It's going to deal double damage with just the same cast. And uh, they are going to be making their way to Salubra, the, uh, the charm uh, merchants, I guess. Uh, and they're going to be buying Shaman Stone to further enhance the power of their spells. And from there, they're going to be doing a very, very, very major sequence break in this game called the Shade Skip to Blue Lake, which is an area that you normally would not and should not be able to access. Uh, but the Hollow Knight game has sort of a corpse run mechanic where if you die, it spawns this enemy called the Shade that you need to kill to get your money back and to uh, repair your soul vessel. And since this is an enemy, it means we can use our uh, our nail or our swor sword in a very creative way and uh, use it to bounce on them and get some extra momentum or, or like heights. So uh, we can reach areas that we wouldn't be able to otherwise. Yep, and uh, chat is asking for Blue's best dash slash axe to you impression. So, uh, dash slash. Beautiful. Truly what the people want. And um, the little mechanic that you guys just saw there with the, um, with the gate is called walkling storage. And it's when you uh, dash into an opening gate, you keep your walkling state and uh, keep going forward faster than you normally would. Which is uh yeah, pretty much more. the game doesn't realize that you are not wall clinging anymore, uh, because like the wall hitbox disappears as you're dashing into it, so it keeps your wall cling states, and it also keeps your dash momentum, 
uh, stuck in that walkling state, so you go zoom zoom very quickly on the wall. Or Ooh, Valley like the gets non-existent a fireball wall. there, which is a little unfortunate, but he makes a good recovery. And that is the shade skip. They both did it quite neatly. Valley unfortunately got a fireball, as Erdo said, but and managed now, to. Uh, now they're going to be going into an area called Blue Lake, named after my co-commentator here. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, my. Yeah, they're on their on their way to get the uh, the Dream Nail, which is an ability that we re are required to get to be able to finish the game. Uh, uh, I don't know. Not in this run, they don't get Dream Nail yet. Quite or yet. actually, yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm Blue has his uh, any percent muscle memory. I've been or, running a lot of true ending. <laughs> or true ending muscle memory there. The the true bane of all runners is muscle memory from other runs. Yeah, so they're going into the City of Tears now. And by that shade skip, we were able to get to the right side of the City of Tears. It's normally divided into two sections, where uh, the right side is very, like, a lot later in the run. Uh, Talking Dynamite, about any percent multi mu muscle memory, Dynamite is just oh, realizing now realized. that just realizing now that he doesn't need to get the Geo from that room. It's no big deal. Extra Geo is always nice. I, uh, it might actually be them going for an alternative to the Hoppers. That is true. Uh, getting a bit more Geo here instead of down by the hoppers, because the hoppers can be quite finicky if you uh, if you get off like the the strategy for killing them. And there's a couple primal aspids just roaming about. Uh, so if you're not confident in handling them, getting that Geo instead is actually quite a good idea. And I believe that used to be the old routes before they figured out a strategy for um, for the hoppers. Mm -hmm. And they're now going to Gorgeous Husk, which is this uh, giant little, uh, or not little, uh, rich little husk, or not little, I cannot speak today. Very large. Very large. <laughs> and gorgeous. It, it gives them uh, a lot of geo, which they're going to be... <laughs> they're going to be using it to, uh, to buy Dash Slash, of course. And now they only need a tiny bit more, uh, which they're going to get from the hoppers, as I mentioned before. Uh, so they're heading down to the Kingdom's Edge, which is the area to the right of here. They're going to be going through this little secret uh, path under this water here. And uh, they're going to be getting the Dash Slash from Nailmaster... Is it Oro? Is Oro the one with Dash Slash? I think it is, um, right? No, I... Mato is the one in Howling Cliffs, and Shio is the Paint Master. Yeah, yes. it's Oro. Oro. It is Oro. So they're My just making personal their way. least favorite. They're just least making their way Dynamite. down here. Dynamite uh, gets the hoppers. These ones have a lot of Geo on them. And Dynamite now has enough. They need 800 Geo. Valley needs and now to they're just going to be making their more. way through. And Valley needs the second row because he didn't get the Geo earlier. And he gets it quite neatly. Uh, so they're just dashing their way to uh, Nailmaster Oro to get Dash Slash, and then they're gonna quit out and use the bench that they benched in King Station to be able to go back there. No problem with private Aspids, primal Aspids, sorry, from either of them, which is good to say. Those things can definitely get annoying if you stick around in one area too long. Yeah, they both got through it pretty neatly. Valley buying uh, the Dash Slash, and Dynamite has already gotten it as well. So uh, yeah, they will so be both quitting out, um, and then they will be on their way to Soul Sanctum, and they're gonna get uh, the Shade Soul on the way, uh, using Dash Slash. Uh, neither Racer bowing before they quit out, just a uh, detail. Op they're choosing optimal strats, of course, over uh, Flare, which is to be expected in a race setting. It's okay. The nail masters understand. They have they have patience. They they get that. There there's no time. They're on a very important mission to save Hollow Nest, and of course the nail masters are gonna understand that. Just as Elderbug did when they didn't talk to them. Uh, and they're just gonna be dashing their way uh, through the City of Tears on their way to Soul Sanctum, and they're gonna be doing the first major lever skip right here. They're gonna be hitting this lever through the floor. Right there, Dynamite does it pretty neatly. Valley's on his way to do it himself. Gets it nicely. And uh, for some reason, since we hit the lever and go through the top of that room, 
you don't actually interact with the light trigger, so the room just stays dark. So it's on them to make sure that uh, they know where to go. And you see the first use of a dash last from dynamite right there. So uh, just not now that you know what it looks like, if you've never seen it before. Pretty much that dash last they just did is just to make sure that uh, they can hit the lever from a tiny bit further away. That's not like a lever skip or anything. So they're getting into Soul Sanctum. This uh, this area has like a lot of RNG. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. The enemies that you're seeing them tackle right now are called Soul Twisters, and they like to teleport around randomly. Uh, and and dynamite right into you if they can. Yeah, dynamite gets the lever skip, uh, like just like that. You jump up to the top. This is patched on current patch. They actually put the rooms in completely separate, or they put the lever and the gates in completely separate rooms to make sure that this wasn't possible anymore. And they're both getting the the shade soul ability. Now their spell is gonna do twice as much damage as before, and. Uh, it's going to be very, very powerful. It's going to have a larger hitbox, which is going to be quite useful for double hits, uh, which we're going to see the runners go for quite a lot, since it's going to allow them to do double the damage with just one spell. You see Dynamite getting kind here's of screwed over by RNG. There's another lever there. skip there with the dash slash, hitting it through the wall. You're going to be fighting this uh, the Soul Warrior. Uh, it's going to die very, very quickly, since they have Shade Soul. Uh, I believe it's four nail hits and two double hits with Shade Soul. I might be incorrect on that. Valley gets it quite quickly. Dynamite was a bit more unlucky. And let's see this Sanctum RNG. This room is the worst one with the Soul Twisters teleporting around seemingly at random. Uh, see there, it's blocking Valley's path. Dynamite is on 2 HP, which is a bit worrying uh, seeing as Anything can happen for, for Soul Master. Valley is on a comfortable. Yes. He decides to heal up, which is probably the smarter idea. Yeah. It's going to lose them a bit more time on the uh, the Soul Master fight, seeing as you can use those, uh, those Soul Vessels or those Soul uh, Containers uh, in the fight by strategically fireballing them once the fight begins, as you're going to see Valignatev do. Uh, and they're both starting the fights. They're going to be wanting to get double hits here and hopefully the boss can cooperate. There are ways to kind of know where the boss is going to teleport, uh, and if you have that knowledge, you can kind of line up so that the boss teleports into fireballs. They both got the first phase down. Uh, they're going to start the second phase. They're both on quite a comfy 4 HP for this, which should be fine. Yeah, there should uh, not be any surprises in the second. Uh, saying that now, there might be, but there should be no surprises here from both runners. We could get a lot of fake dives, with, which would be... Oh, Valley going for some swag strats. Oh my. Very, very impressive from Velignatov. Getting quite a consistent strategy there. And Dynamite getting the boss to stop diving. Getting some nice RNG there. And looking over in chat, thank you, Axe, to you for the raid. Hope you uh, all enjoy the race. All right, so we're going to see here. They're both picking up the Descending Dive, or Desolate Dive, that's what it's called. The Desolate Dive ability, uh, which we're going to be using for a couple of crumbly floors that we can break through. It's just another, like, progression item, Metroidvania progression item, which also uh, gives a lot of invincibility frames. So once we get the upgraded version of that, we are going to use it in combat quite a lot. Uh, you can see... The main example of this when we get to Watcher Knights, which almost everyone uh, considers quite a difficult fight. Uh, you're gonna see these runners not struggle as much as uh, you perhaps would imagine. Uh, it's quite a, a, a like a big contrast to a category like any percent, where we have almost nothing going up to, um, to Watcher Knights. Here we have quite an easy way of killing them very rapidly. <laughs> Which is uh, satisfying, to say the least, for uh, any percent runners all around the world. Yeah. So they're both on their way to King Station now. They're going to want 300 Geo, so they're going to have to get a bit more on the way. Uh, but there are quite a lot of enemies, and they have Shade Souls, so they can kill them very rapidly. 
Uh, so yeah, they're gonna be dashing their way to King Station. Uh, they're gonna take a bench at Watcher's Spire on the way, just so that they can quit out after this very long segment without a bench. After going through the entirety of Crystal Peaks and getting Dream Nail, uh, so that they can return and do Watcher Knights and move on from there. So Dynamite and Velignut have both on the way to this bench. And from here on out, they're gonna be v wanting to not take any, any damage at all. Yeah, this is a very, very tight section health-wise. There's not that many places where you get a lot of soul, and there are a lot of places where you can lose a lot of health very quickly. <laughs> That's we a very talking good about it before. We were talking about it before with the, uh, this is a major place you can lose a lot of time if you die, too. Up almost like, how long is this split? It's... This entire section has to be around maybe five minutes in total. Yeah, so if you die at the that. very end of it, you go all the way back to the start, which is scary to say the least in a tournament setting. None of them going for impossible jump. Uh, they're right here at King Station now, so they're going to want to buy this. Dynamite's giving Dynamite us some wiggle. Dynamite doesn't go for the scurry look down. Instead, he uh, wiggles for us. Which is, uh, Instead, yeah. Different strategy. Respectful. I respect the Wiggles. Always. So they're they're going now to uh, Dirtmouth, and they're gonna want to dash all the way to Crystal Peaks from here. Uh, and as, as we both mentioned, this section is gonna be quite difficult. Crystal Peaks has a lot of tight cycles that you need to make, and we're gonna have to go through quite a bit of the area, because once we get... Uh, once we get Crystal Hearts, we are not done. We want to get to uh, the Descending Dark pickup, which is still in Crystal Peaks. And it's going to require us to do a room in the darkness since we don't have the Luma Fly Lantern yet. Which, um, there are some pretty comfortable strats for that room. And uh, I think it'll be interesting to see which strats both uh, runners are going to use for the dark room. Or not that we will see much at all, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> yeah. I'm Thank sorry for the bad pun. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> My gosh. Now we get to say hi to everyone's least favorite NPC, Myla. Uh, apparently, Valley said uh, that they were going to kill Myla, which I very much disapprove of. And I uh, much, very much approve of. Um... So we're yeah. going to be seeing... Are we going to be seeing Dynamite go for Pogax? I think we are. Oh, uh, no. no. they were not. I so, respect it. It's quite yeah, a safe choice. Especially with the, um, what are the, whatever those things are called, um, being on the other side, it's pretty smart to go the other way. Otherwise, you'll have to tank a lot more health. Valley goes for Pongax and gets it quite neatly. The the miner cooperated quite a bit. It's going to be a, a pretty nice time save for him. Uh, and, and this uh, room that they're going through now, or, yeah, they're both going through now, is very cycles-based. And uh, if you can catch up to how these guys are running, it will be very good. Ooh, two health gone from Dynamite. It's not too worrying yet, but he has to be definitely a little more careful. Valley goes for the uh, damageless key room fast strat. Unfortunately, doesn't get it and takes a hit. Uh, they're both on three and four HP, which should be fine. Uh, it's a bit tight. They might want to heal once, especially Dynamites, unless they go for Damageless Cycle, uh, which I'm assuming they're both going to do. But who knows, maybe one of them hasn't practiced it or something. Uh, Dynamites, so let's see what kind of cycle they're going for. They're going for the Fast Cycle, or no, they're going for Damageless. And they Ooh. unfortunately missed the cycle, which is going to be a pretty significant time loss around maybe five to ten seconds. It's unfortunate. Valley goes for damageless cycle and gets it quite nicely. Uh, Dynamite and grabbing a little extra soul, which is probably smart. Probably a good call. I haven't hey, seen underplat. There we go. That's what we like to see. Valley going for underplat. Nice. All right. So they both have crystal heart now, and uh, they're going to be making their way to the sending dark in the crystallized mound. And uh, you're going to see a room with a lot of crushers, which can be quite tight to uh, to get through. Sometimes you mess it up and you kind of get stuck there. 
And then after that, we're not done, there's a dark room. And now we're gonna see uh, these runners' true colors to see if they save the grub or not. The grub is pretty much right in your path. Ooh. Uh, ooh, that's an unfortunate damage tank by dynamites. Yeah, sometimes They're you gotta take, their, take your time with these crushers because they can be very annoying. All right, they got through it. Let's see. Does Valley say <gasps> Valley? Ooh, okay. Ooh, Valley, oh my God! Us. Playing with my heart keeping like us, that. How could you us do this for as long as possible? <laughs> <laughs> my gosh! Don't do that ever again, Valley. But, you uh, had me there for a second. Bo both. Ooh, ooh that's, that's going to be a tough situation for Dynamite. Uh oh. Ooh, this is scary. They're on one HP in a dark room. Uh oh. Okay, they got Whoa, through it. Sheesh. Ooh, that is very scary. Yeah. That is quite lucky for them that they managed to get through that. If they died there, uh, that would have been a very, very significant time loss. That would have been maybe three or four minutes. Valley goes for the damage tank strats, in which you can get a dash slash and store your dash momentum slide off the, the platform, take a hazard respawn, and get control of your character early, and leave the room. And it also looks kind of cool, because you go slide on the ground, and uh, that's fun, and I like that. And Dynamite finishes the rest of Mound. No health lost. Could have been very close if he got knocked off the edge by one of the... Uh, Dynamite goes for the... Uh, the hazard tank strat as well gets it quite neatly and now has the sending dark they're both on their way to dream nail uh there's um it looks like there is about a three minute difference between the runners uh, this could all turn later absolutely but yeah they've valley. both been playing well there's n there's been no big big mistakes from either runner valley just has a very good movement which is expected. If uh, if dynamite uh, is on, is if dynamite's PB is around an hour, this could be a pretty pretty nice PB pace for them. Absolutely. So now Valley we're seeing the most the, the most tricky plants. room in the game in any percent. I to, hate uh, green plants. Up. Now the question is, does he go for the under platform? Yes, he yes. does. Very okay. nice. We love no to see the other there. Uh, I don't like the dream plats. Uh, I think I'm quite known for falling a lot <laughs> on them. Uh, uh, I I, th I don't think anyone's ever safe from dream platforms. When you least expect it, they'll come and get you. Even if if you expect it, I go in every time expecting to fall, and I still do. It really is the. Uh, it's gonna give me heart problems later later in life. That's uh, uh that's all I have to say about it. All right, they both got through it without falling once. That's very nice. And Dynamite finally gets to to breathe out and uh, get back to full health once again. Once they quit out here, very they impressive. Had a very too. very scary segment there. Yeah, and I'm very impressed that they got that is not well. easy to do on one and two HP, especially in the tournament. Yeah. Death is, yeah. That is that is a very impressive uh, recovery from them. So, Valignatev going into the Watcher Knights fights. Now you're going to see what we were the talking Watcher's about abuse. before. Oh, uh, so excited. They're pretty much going to stand up uh, and just die instantly. Yeah, <laughs> maybe maybe take a take a breath or two and then they're gone. So, Valley going in with uh, the quick two quick dives and two nail hits and a fireball. And the watcher is dropped dead on the ground. And what he tackles the next two in the same way, spams three dives, and just cleans up the one that he couldn't manage to get all too quickly because it moved away. So this is pretty much what the the all skills watcher knights fight looked like. It's uh it's quite nice comparing to other categories and You're very different from playthroughs. Any percent and god save uh, low percent. That, that fight is definitely something special. All right, Dynamite started their uh, their Watcher Knights fight as well. Got the first one quite cleanly. Uh, and start spamming dives. The way that we can do this on 1.2.2.1 is that 
the dive invulnerability frames, they weren't really fixed yet. So if you time your dives well, you can be fully invincible as long as you keep spamming them. Which is mm -hmm. how you saw these runners just uh, spam dives on top of the boss over and over again. And dive, I believe, does about 80 damage. Ooh, that's a bit scary for dynamites. Takes a strategic heal. heal. I don't think this one has much health, though, but I could be wrong. It, it does oh, have does. quite a lot. I could see that heal being quite of a riskier play than just playing aggressively, but it worked out, so I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. Uh, and Dynamite's on their way to the first Dreamer as well. Seems to be doing a slightly different Geo routing here, getting the Geo chest before Lyrian rather than after, which is quite interesting. Yeah. If you get it after, you can charge your C-dash to get out of the room while collecting Geo, but it's not too big of a deal. Yeah, it doesn't make too much of a difference. It's like a small. So, um, Valley specifically asked me to talk about during the Watcher Night elevator climb that he um, wants everyone to realize that banning Televator was a bad idea. So, uh, Televator is a glitch that allows you to go instantly up elevators. And uh, Valley just wanted me to say that he wants it back in the game. So. Hashtag legalized Televator 2021. Hashtag free Televator 2021. So, um... Although I disagree, though. I think it should stay banned. It, feel, I, I, it feels quite major to me, to be honest. It, yeah, I agree. I definitely agree with that sentiment. But it is a pretty cool trick. And if you... It looks very cool. But it definitely does feel more major than not. <laughs> Alright, so Valley going on their way to the Ismus tier pickup. A lot of uh, he's going to be doing quite an interesting spikes tunnel skip here to skip fighting the dung defender. Uh, yeah. That one is quite precise, and he got it first try, which is very neat. So this split and has it's going to be oh, sorry. So yeah, um, so this split has three pretty difficult skips in a row. You're going to see the first one. You already saw the first one. That's the second one, and the third one coming up right here. Um, all in succession, and you need to do it all with the same health. Which Gets is... all three very, very cleanly. That's looking very nice from Valley. Uh, and gets the Whirmp early control as well by taking a hit by that Whirmp. Uh, and now Valley is on his way to Broken Vessel. And uh, Dynamite is just now making their way down to Ismus here, following what Valley just did. And we're going to see how they, how, uh, how those skips end up looking for them. They are quite precise, and even experienced runners do mess them up occasionally. Ooh, takes a hazard dunk there. Takes a bit of a fall. It's all right. These the skips are quite tricky. Yeah. Uh, so it's that, that was. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen that before. He hit the spike side sideways. Slash. Yeah. Ooh. It's looking a bit of unfortunate for Dynamite, but they can probably clean this up. May I take a breather? They're, they're doing uh, Togo a difficult. bit too early. Uh, but they could p potentially get this back. It's looking quite scary here on 1 HP. There is a place for recover HP in the next room. But they got it on the last, the last HP. Dynamite yeah. is just really scaring us today with these 1 HP plays. It's quite... Quite scary. They're probably gonna go for the uh, the blur. Is that what they're called? Blurg sacks. Um, I think it is. The uh, egg containers. The egg oh. containers. You can actually dream nail dream nail this for infinite soul, uh, which is quite a good idea if you end up on low HP coming into this segment. Uh, so you can just heal up to full there and make sure that you're you're all good on health. And uh, Valley is now yeah. going down to uh, to broken vessel, going through the. The, uh, what are they called? They're called the, uh, I cannot think. The Molarchs. And uh, they can yes. be quite rude with their RNG, as you just saw. Uh, oh, I didn't Valley. know that you could dash under that. That's pretty interesting. Valley is on 1 HP. This is looking quite scary for him. Both of these runners are just really scaring us today. He finds Ooh, some of these projectiles are really, really close. <laughs> but Valley manages to get the heels out. And Do you know if that corner is here. safe or no? He gets a weird walkling storage there. I don't think I've ever seen that before, but... Uh, that one's... I think that one's consistent. Yeah, that one Dynamite is... Dynamite got through the Isma skips as well, which is nice. 
and uh, is now making their way to Ancient Basin and the Broken Vessel as well. Let's see what kind of uh, fights Valley gets, and let's see what kind of RNG Dynamite gets on the Sea Dash. Gets through very neatly with the RNG on those. And Valignatev starting the Broken Vessel fights. What Valley's going to be looking for here is the uh, the headbang attack, uh, in which he can just spam dive. Contrary to uh, most other categories where we don't have dive at this point. Mm -hmm. Or maybe that's just true ending. I run too much true ending. Uh. So uh, another thing he's going to be looking for is uh, fireball doubles, which are very big if he's not. Ooh, unfortunate that he started. Staggers he staggered. out of the uh, that attack. Gets but, the fight, uh, though. Maybe the RNG wasn't too favorable, but Valley managed to handle the RNG quite well. Goes for a swag C dash from the other side of the room. You love to see it. Very oh, nice. You love to see it. And now we see Dynamite entering the area at the same time. And the whole point of this all was to get uh, the wings. Yeah, so the modern allow wings you to double jump. are double jump pretty much. We don't actually need it anywhere in this run for moving around. Uh, we just have to pick it up because uh, of the, the all skills requirement of this category. That's like it the whole point skill. of the category. Yep. Ooh, Ooh dynamite. dynamite on one HP. Scaring us once again. Yeah, they're on three now. They should be fine. Hopefully. Takes a hit there due to RNG. Very unfortunate. Does choose to grab soul from him though, which is smart. I wonder if they're gonna open the shortcut in case they die, because they are only on two HP. They decide oh, not they to open not the shortcut. To. Ooh. We I hope they don't die. Yeah. We appreciate the guts. And Valley is now making her, uh, his way to uh, to uh, the hidden station to be able to go back to the King Station and uh, go to fight Hornet too, because we need King's Brand to get into the Abyss. And from the Abyss, we need both Shade Cloak and Abyss Shriek as the category's requirements. So it's going to be required later, and we we have that segment now because it's just convenient since we're coming out of a stag. Yep. So, so Valley uh, is making his way into uh, Kingdom's Edge once again, as Dynamite finishes off the Broken Vessel fight quite neatly. Uh, they didn't die, they didn't even get low on H HP this time, so that was very nice. And they're on their way to pick up the Monarch Wings as well. Yep, and Valley's going over here to fight Hornet 2, one of the harder bosses in the uh, in the run, for sure. Yeah, this moves is definitely very the hardest fast. fight. Yeah, definitely the hardest fight. Moves very fast. We'll see if he picks up the safety bench. He does not pick up the safety bench. Valley is quite experienced with uh, this and many other categories, so I think he should be fine. Uh, hopefully. I very much hope so. Because sometimes, like even for experienced runners, Hornets can just be very mean. Yeah. Uh, you know, she's she's one of those siblings that, that tends to play quite rough. Uh, and that's, that's sometimes she parries your fireballs. If you have siblings, you can relate to when your siblings parry your fireballs when you try to so, beat them. Um, some things what to look even for. Saying? <laughs> <laughs> so some things to look for in this fight, again, is the double fireballs. Those do a very large amount of damage. And also Hornet's parry mechanic which basically means that you don't do any damage to her while she's parrying. And um, she also swings her nail in retaliation or whatever she's using. This is, all, this is very bad if you hit a, like a fireball at her and she parries it. So um, we'll be looking at that for this fight. We might actually want to switch. Actually, no, Valley, Valley's audio is not too... Uh... We wouldn't want to have Valley's audio because he's ahead, but there seems to be a bit of a problem with it, too, so it should be fine. Yeah. All right, Valley finishes off the Hornets' fights, gets King's Brand quite neatly, and now we're going to see if he goes and invalidates his run or not by uh, messing up the early control or not. <laughs> so there's a trick called the Nail Art Early Control we can do here coming out of this cutscene. 
uh, in, in which if you do it too early, you get controlled while your character is invisible and it invalidates your run. It would be a bit of a, a penalty in this instead of just invalidating it. And he does not invalidate his run, which is quite nice. And now we're going to see and, Dynamite, uh, Dynamite also going for Hornet 2. Um, Dynamite's opted to take the safety bench, which is probably a good call uh, in a tournament setting. It's only a, a minor time loss. And uh, if you die, it's going to save you a lot of time. And Valley is now on his way back to King Station to be able to stag all the way to Dirtmouth and go up and get Cyclone Slash through King's Pass. So let's see what Dynamite's Hornet 2 fight look like. Hopefully, it's uh, it's not too, uh, too mean. And they got the first stagger. This is now where you can kind of start uh, getting double hits and all that. Hornet is being very rude with a lot of parries here. It's not quite what what kind of RNG you you want to see. So we're oh, hoping that is uh, unfortunate. Yeah, we're hoping the luck turns for Dynamite here. Yeah, we're getting a, a lot, lot of, of parries. parries. Yeah, that oh is definitely gosh. some bad RNG. But he's definitely taking the fight well, which is. Yeah, for sure. They're Definitely handling good. it quite decently. Uh, like, it's very easy when you get like a lot of parries to accidentally be fireballing as she parries into you. Nice, finishes out the fights, does some wiggles, and uh, is on their way to uh, to be able to pick up the King's Brand. This is Valley see. is on his way up to the Howling Cliffs. Back to King's Pass and uh, grabbing the Cyclone Slash from the second um, Nail Master. This is the, the better way of returning to King's Pass in the speedrun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's definitely for sure. Well, we, as, as much as we do love our resets, this is definitely better. Is Dynamite going for the early control? They are not. They decided to, to play it safe and not go for it. I can respect that. Mm -hmm. And Valley picks up the... Uh, the Cyclone Slash, which is the second nail art we'll see in this run. It pretty much lets your uh, your knights do like a little spinny blow and uh, hit multiple times around itself. Uh, yeah, current patch grabs it earlier because it can help them drop faster, but um, this patch has little need for it, so they grab it pretty late in the run. For anything except for Wiggles, they don't use, have to use it much. So now we see Dynamite following suit and Valley using the Cyclone Slash to not have to take a hard fall there, which is nice. Yeah, there are quite a, a couple instances of different nail art early control strategies that we use. Uh, actually, funny enough, you're going to be seeing uh, one of each nail art being used on that same well. The first time when we were going to Crystal Peaks, we used... Uh, Dash Slash, now we're using Cyclone, and on the third one we'll use Great Slash when we're going to the Hollow Knights. And Val Valley on his way to Umu, uh, using some Cyclones in places where he isn't able to inventory drop because you want to be moving at the same time. That's actually quite useful, I have not really thought of that, and that's something that I'm going to be picking up for my own runs after watching this because it's, it's a little small time save, so it's quite useful. And uh, Valley's going to be looking to get a one-cycle Umu kill here, using a strategy where we knock Umu strategically into a wall, out of bounds, to be able to get double hits with our fireball without Umu flying into a platform and stopping. So if he does it correctly, he can get the one-cycle barely, and if he messes it up, he's gonna do have to do a second Umu cycle. So let's see what kind of uh, what kind of Umu patterns he end up, ends up getting. And Umu could also just uh, give you a lot of bad RNG. Could also yeah. just something else in this run that uh, is very RNG dependent is Umu, much like a lot of the run, to be honest, and a yeah, lot I don't... of all in general. Um, like on this setup. Like saving an extra attack because Umu can randomly give an extra attack because why not? Uh, is ooh Valley gets an extra attack that is very unlucky. Ooh, and, and he's he is now on one HP. Not ooh, this is either. 
This is looking quite scary. And doesn't get the one cycle, unfortunately. Very, very unlucky for Velignatev getting the, the Omu extra attack. And Dynamite is now on their way to fight Umu as well. Valley uses the Dream Nail to get that soul from Umu. That was very scary. He was very close right there, but I have confidence that he will be fine. Decides to play it aggressively. And gets Umu on the second cycle, barely. That was very, very well played from Valley, even though missing, uh, even though they missed the uh, the one cycle. Gets a cool walkling storage threat. That is very. I have, yeah, I don't think I've actually ever seen that before. That was very cool. So um, yeah, no, even Valley's to this gonna day, be, cool new strats are being found. Valley's gonna be uh, getting Monomon here, the second dreamer. And then they're going to be leaving the archives and going up to uh, going up to Nailmaster Shio to be able to get the final nail arts called Great Slash, which is pretty much what it it says. It's like a Great Slash, just a large large attack. Yep. And then we are going to be going into Queen's Gardens. On doing... the way, we're going to be getting the uh, the Howling Wraiths, which is our third spell, the upward spell. Uh, just so that we spell. can pick that up. We have to go to the Overgrown Mound. Looks like Dynamite's just going to be doing... I wonder normal? what setup Dynamite's doing. Yeah, a normal looking setup for a two cycle. Or not. Hmm. Or not. Interesting. It's not quite the one cycle. I, they might just be improvising. Yeah, it looks like just an improvisation. Improvisation, whatever. Improv. Yeah, that but, should still uh, be a pretty safe two cycle for them. Yep. Uh, as long as they can get some dream nails in here on Umu while uh, they aren't able to be attacked. For sure. Valley grabbing this bench so he's able to uh, work back to it. And. Barely yeah, gets. The, barely. Uh, that was quite uh, scary. I thought they were going to have to do a three cycle. But they got it quite neatly. And they're now dropping down and getting Monomon, just as Valley did a couple seconds ago. Valley is now doing some movements on the way up to uh, to to Green Path again to go to Shio, and Dynamite is going to be following along and doing the same thing very soon. Valley gets the uh, the Airwalk there to be able to do a second dash in the air. It's a little bit of a glitch that we can use in some spots. And now you're going to be seeing just a, a bit of movement sections from both of the runners. They're uh, like the the tournament uh, restream is quite synced up, so you're going to be seeing almost the same segments going on for both of them. Just yep. that valley is a bit a bit ahead in both regards to uh, uh, the actual run and like the restream. These couple minutes coming forward for Valley and Dynamite are going to be very movement based. Their movement skills. Very important in this run, I'd say more than a lot of different runs, movement is very important. And uh, we're going to see some cool strats, hopefully, out of both of them. And now we see Valley going to get Great Slash. Hopefully not hitting that uh, big spike thing that has plagued so many casual runners. Yeah, all right. And, uh, Valley remembers up. to cancel the C dash before going going through the room transition, and is now has now picked up the the great slash ability. And Dynamite is now on the way to Green Path as well to do the very same thing. Valley is now going to be going uh, kind of in the same direction at the beginning, but then uh, veering off to the left and going to the Overgrown Mound and towards the entrance to the Queen's Gardens, which we're going to be seeing another lever skip with Dash Slash to enter. Because normally you would need to go either from behind or have Shade Cloak to get through that entrance. Valley goes for the RNG C dash and gets it. Nice. Sometimes that jellyfish can be quite rude in the way that it spawns, and you can get hit for two damage while moving through the room. 
Yep, and they're gonna be going this way, which is another near acid. Uh, I wouldn't say skip, just shortcut, if you will, to uh, go up and get here pretty early. All right, so Valley enters the Overgrown Mound. This is gonna be a bit of a combat arena against a bunch of mosquitoes, or squits as they're called. And uh, there are quite a lot of different ways to tackle this. I don't actually know which one is the fastest. It might be the uh, the one I'm thinking of, the one that Valley seems to be going for. Uh, and he gets the, all the setups quite neatly and accidentally takes a damage tank there on that uh, that mosquito on the not way the to the end of the world. Raids. Yeah. Damage uh, healthier is pretty tight, but not quite as tight as the, um, the crystal queens, heart. Or crystals. Yeah. Crystal Peak section. And Dynamite forgets to cancel his C-Dash, unfortunately. Takes a hit, but uh, he's going to be quitting out soon, so... Doesn't really matter too much. Valley is now going into the Queen's Gardens. Not really for anything in the Queen's Gardens itself, just because it's the fastest way to get to Deep Nests. And we want to get to Hera the Beast, the third dreamer of the game. And then after that, uh, Valley is going to be going into the Abyss and picking up the Shade Cloak in Abyss Shriek, and then we're going to be seeing the end of the run with the Hollow Knight boss fights. So that's what you're going to be seeing here in, in the, the the near future for both runners. Yep, and um, they're so going, going. going to be doing a hazard respawn strat just by abusing the way the, the hazard respawn zones uh, are located right here. So he's going to be taking a damage tank right there, and gonna spawn on the underside and get to this lever a bit quicker. And he's now gonna be going he's gonna through. Be... Yep, uh, Valley's gonna be going through these rooms pretty cleanly. They're definitely strats that have been established for all these pretty difficult rooms coming up. And uh, at the same time, Dynamite's gonna be entering Chris, um, not Crystallized Mound, Overgrown Mound. Yeah. Now that's. Uh... You might remember a bit of a detail about this run. We never actually got the Lumafly Lantern, which means you're going to be seeing three dark rooms from Valley uh, right here. And uh, yeah, I know that Valley has these quite, quite locked in. It shouldn't be a problem for them, but uh, who knows? Sometimes you you get an unlucky hazard respawn. And the thing with dark rooms is that if you take, take a hazard respawn, you always spawn at the beginning of the room again. Uh, Which is definitely so unfortunate. It's it's it could be quite a big time loss if you if you mess up in this these rooms. Valley gets to the through the first ones, first two ones quite neatly. Now this and is the most difficult one. Now going, going through the last one. Yep. And uh Ooh, not that you can see much, house. but Valley got through it. Took a heart or, or took a hit there. Uh, which was quite unfortunate. It's going to be a bit scary here with the the devouts. Yeah, I so think he does not get his health back here because one, the, you don't get it back from the bench, and he won't be taking the bench here. He's going to be going up. Little shortcut if you've never seen it. You could actually go all the way up through here. I think Valley might be healing here because going against the devouts, even though you can kill it quickly, if it just walks into you, then uh, then you're dead. Nope. Oh, he goes uh, for the, oh, yeah, the three shade do... soul strat. That's a good idea. And dynamite using the hazard respawn. And now Valley is through the, the other difficult section here. I'm back on full HP, so it's going to be pretty comfy here. And uh, Dynamite is now making their way into Deep Mist again, or once again, what you just saw Valley doing. And is now moving through this long room. Uh... The difference between the runners seems to be around six and a half minutes or so. Um, I might be Pretty, wrong on that, actually. Yeah, there are, there are still a couple places. Actually, where actually you... that's not how you compare times at all. Hold on, I'm being dumb. No, yeah. <laughs> Dynamite takes. I think, takes I think it might be actually be more to that run or to that room. And so, um, Valley is now going to be going to the Distant Village stack. Has barely enough Geo. 200, at 256. Uh, and you need 250 for the stag station. 
and uh, he's going to be going to Distant Village. At the same time, we're going to be seeing some dark rooms out of um, or Dynamite. Or or he drops off the first one. Ooh, Ooh that's, that's quite scary there. Definitely the scary. Room. They got interrupted from their C dash. They De pause. pause. All right. Maybe just like dr wiping their hands or something. Probably a good idea. Can get quite Not too far. Here. There's going to be a spider here. Goes for the soul of the spider. Probably a very good idea from them. And they managed to uh, to kill that spider without dying. Yep. And, and Valley uh, is going to be going into the abyss, one of the scarier um, areas of the game. So it, the main enemy of this um, area are the, uh, the siblings or the shades that you're going to be seeing. And they do two damage each. So if you get th hit three times by one of them, you're done. It can also, be very Valley annoying. Blue recently uh, learned that very well. That they could be very annoying. <laughs> I'm, I'm still, I'm still suffering from that. Lost a PV pace pretty recently to those, to those siblings. But um, Valley's now going to be doing the lighthouse climb. I saw uh, a pretty in interesting strat from him before, before the race. Let's see if he does it. Um, no, it looks like Ooh, he's just going to be taking a safer time. route. The siblings are in quite unfortunate spawns here. Uh, ooh, Moving that's a bit over. scary, uh, but Valley got through it. There's uh, some soul there's not here if he wants to heal. To damage on before uh, he gets to get a heal, so yeah. he should be fine. And uh, Dynamite now kills Hera the Beast and is now on their way to Abyss as well. So Valley's gonna be doing a strategic quit outs uh, during the Shade Soul pickup or Shade Cloak, sorry, the Shade Cloak pickup cutscene uh, to be able to skip a bit of that. It's quite a long cutscene, and quitting out is a lot faster, which is also conveniently gonna give him full health back. Uh, so that's that's pretty neat. After those two da damage tanks on the uh, the siblings there on the climb, and uh, Valley's now gonna be making his way to. The Abyss Freak pickup, and then he's gonna have to climb all the way up to Hidden Station again because picking up the Shade Cloak is actually a hard save. So uh, if you were to quit out, you would you would spawn back there. Yep. So um, which he uses to advantage to his own advantage once to get through the cutscene quickly, but now he has to climb all the way back up, which is a pretty interesting climb and I think one of the cooler parts of the run. Dynamite's run has quite a lot of personality in those in those wiggles that they do. I, I really like that. We do love the wiggles. I thought you like were going to be saying personality in. and the uh, one HP scares that he gives us. That they give us. <laughs> Valley popping up in chats. Valley, focus your running. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Runner in chat. All right, Valley gets the Abyss Freak, and Dynamite is down on their way to the Abyss. So, um, ooh, an unfortunate hit. This could be a PB pace from Dynamite, if I'm not mistaken. This PB is just over an hour, but, uh, Getting a bit of an unfortunate drop here. This can yeah. be quite uh, quite is. difficult if you don't know the spots of, uh, of the inventory drops. And Valley is doing the Abyss Climb. Took a bit of a hit on that. Uh, what are these even called? The, the little shelly, crawly... Uh, shadow friends. Creepers, I believe. I shadow I Creepers. Heard, I think I heard that in another race I was watching. But except for that, ver gets a very decent Abyss Climb. Gets a bit of a, an unfortunate moment with that other... Shadow Creeper there, and Dynamite is doing the Lighthouse Climb, and uh, manages to get through it quite safely. Yep, and um, unless Valley Chain dies to THK, which we're not expecting this race, is pretty much decided. Both runners have been running very, very well so far. Yeah, Valley right now, uh, if you follow kind of this pace, this is, I think this is pace for a 51xx, which is... Which is very, very nice. It's quite close to uh, to his PB, so uh, 
getting a tournament run like this is definitely something to be happy about. What is Dinah's PB? Uh, Dinah's PB is uh, 1 hour and 15 seconds, so he's definitely on pace for a possible tournament PB. Oh, no. Yeah, I, I, I won current patch. Yeah, don't don't commentators curse it though. Yeah, yeah. You say it's possible. If you say it's possible, it doesn't count. That's how commentators curses work, right? So, um, Valley, Valley shoots oh, a bit. <laughs> no, I thought he was going for Mila, but then he remembers oh. the, uh, the tiebreaker. Valley, so, don't you dare! Don't you something, dare! Something uh, to consider from the chat is. Out of all the matches, there's a tiebreaker for who gets into the top eight, who gets into where, and that tiebreaker is the uh, average time of the runners. So there isn't going to be much um, swag strats during the runs for much of the runners. More, uh, <laughs> all right. like more of an after the run type thing. Valley's going into the final boss. Uh, is now breaking the chains as Dynamite is about to pick up uh, a bit streak. Tries uh, cyclone strats. All right, so the Hollow Knight can be quite uh, mean, especially when you're going for optimal strats with a bit streak for damage, because uh, the Hollow Knight has it, it has quite a big forehead, quite a big head head hitbox. So like it's uh, sometimes that hitbox is a bit janky as well. So you can take a lot of damage just by standing next to the boss and trying to uh, trying to get shrieks in. And sometimes the RNG just isn't in your favor either. But this fight is quite quick with all of the scare. Uh, this boss isn't all that powerful on this patch. It was actually buffed later. Uh, so on this patch, you might be thinking the boss is a bit slow uh, compared to what, what it should be. But that is probably like because of that. You might be used to current patch. And yeah, current gets patch into... DHK is definitely a little more scary. And, and Valley um... is almost at the end of the fight. Gets the scream skip, very nice. And that is going to be GG's. So um, we're going to wait till uh, both of the runners are done to get them in for interviews. So uh, in the me in the meantime, sorry, I was waiting for Val oh, Valley's. I don't know what Valley's doing. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, there you go. There All we right. go. Um, Big Valley GG's. is going to be taking a water break or killing Myla in the meantime. Valley hopefully. takes the win for this round. Uh, and Dynamite is on their way to the final boss as well. So uh, we're going to be waiting to see their run finish out as well. And then we're going to be getting both the runners in here for an interview, if they want, of course. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so let's see. Definitely okay. good running for both runners. Um Zero death, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. Uh, they uh they got us a bit scared at points, uh especially dynamite in the crystal peaks, but they managed to kind of clutch that out as well. Um so both runners are actually quite close to uh Quite close to their uh, their PBs in these races, which is very very good to see yeah. in a tournament setting. Like if you're anywhere close to your personal best in a tournament run, you're uh, doing something right. You're doing something very right, and that's something to be very proud of. Dynamite uh, opts to take the uh, the black egg bench. This is useful if you get a uh, invisible THK or like a an infinite load or something that might mess up the run. Uh, but except for that, they're also on their way to just finish out the run. Let's see what kind of Hollow Knight fight they get. Yeah, there's a lot of lot of mishaps that can happen with the uh, THK, with the invisible and the slide, especially in this type of run. So I would never wish that upon anyone in a tournament. So um, let's let's see what's uh. Dinah has in store for us for this for this uh, fight. Ooh, good in Some nice shrieks in. Uh, the Hollow Knight is giving quite... Oh, got a, an accidental scream skip there on, on that scream. That is uh, quite rare to see. 
and uh, the boss enters their second phase. So uh, if you don't know when the Hollow Knight is doing his own little stabby thing, all of your attacks, or any attacks done against it, only do one damage. That's why the runners take their time to heal there. Because it's not yeah, really worth it. If you it need to, to heal, that's the best place to do it. And if not, you you might just see them like whack with their nail. Yeah. Because just you want to get some extra get one damage soul. here and there. No scream sip out of Dyna. All right. Uh, Dynamite is almost, I'm guessing, just one shriek away from the end. One ooh, nail yeah. hit, actually. So that is going to be GG's for Dyna as well. Big GG's. Also around a minute uh, or two from their PB. That is a very good run for a tournament. Uh, and I, I think both of them did really well this run. So, uh, yeah. We're GG's to have few runners. Or, uh, one of them you should be proud. Area. You should be proud of yourselves for this. That was nice. So, yeah. They're, they are both finished up with their runs. And we are gonna see if we can get them in here for an interview. interview. I think the uh, process is automatic. And uh, yeah. hopefully we'll be seeing Valley here go and uh, Valley, do I his swear thing. Killed Nyla. I'm gonna be so sad. Valley, how, do it. Could you really... How, how can you do this to me? Oh, yes, Valley. How can you do this? Valley, please. Yes, Valley. Valley, Valley no, please. <laughs> All right, so um, uh, we have both runners in here for an interview. If uh, you guys could uh, come in, actually, I, could, I think I could just drag them in. Hello, right. hello, both of you. Hey, hey, what hey. Up? I'm my GGs. Hero. GGs on the runs. Hold on, yeah, we big might... GGs. Both within pretty respectable times of your PBs. Hopefully, you're happy with them. Ah, uh, meh. <laughs> yeah, you had you had some pretty close moments, both of you. Valley, you uh, you got quite close there with Umu. Umu was being kind of rude to you, and Dynamite's had a close moment in uh, Valley. Don't do it, Valley. No, Valley, no, yes, no. Don't kill my love, please. Valley, yes. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, definitely some close moments, both in Peaks and in Dark Deep Nest. Out of Dino, yeah. very good to uh, pull out of it. Yeah, so that's uh, that was definitely uh, a very interesting run to watch, and I hope you both are quite happy with it. It was mm -hmm. it was definitely fun to commentate. So uh, at least there's that. I don't know yeah. if you guys noticed, but I got two on HP like four times in the run. <laughs> yeah, you were definitely uh, playing with our heartstrings there, and you clutch it out every time. So, which is very nice. Yeah, we're definitely looking forward to seeing both of, more of both of you in the tournament. Should be very good. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting to see uh, what this tournament brings. So far, all of the matches have been really, <coughs> really, really fun. Yeah, it was Lots actually on PB pace up until uh, Broken Vessel. Valley, I see that dive. Don't do that. <laughs> Valley, the dive is right there, right for the taking. Oh, do uh, can you hear me? When? Yeah, we can hear you. Ah, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I wasn't PB pace before Broken Vessel, but I got really unfortunate Mallorks, and then it, yeah, the whole yeah. run just. Went sideways. I choked Umu extra attack and like, ah. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, getting an extra attack, like saving that is very, very difficult. I, I so. fell down before an extra, so that was like no way back. <laughs> but, but yeah. Uh, but that's, yeah okay, I think that's going to wrap it up. GG's. Yeah. yeah. GG's to both of you. GG's. Uh, GG's. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, um, all. So that's pretty much all we got. We, uh, we're, I'm waiting for one more thing before we uh, start to sign off from Valley here. Valley, don't no. do it, please. Okay. Uh, well, if no. you ask, please, Valley. I'll ask nicely. Pretty please. I'm, I'm also asking very nicely here. <laughs> it's actually happened already. It's just a stream delay, so I'm really sorry for everyone. No. Else. <laughs> oh <laughs> yes. No. Why? <laughs> No. Yes. Uh, no. So big GGs to both of you. Um, good luck in your future matches. I lost a lot of respect for you there, Valley. And, uh, <laughs> thank you <laughs> for uh, hanging out with yeah. us. Thank you to Valley and, and, and Dynamites for the run. That was really fun to watch. And I think that's going to be uh, wrapping it up for, for today's race. And uh, yeah. Uh, any words from either of you before we uh, end? GG's uh, Dino, a really good run. 
GG is valid. Uh, chat was being really nice to me. Let's go. Uh, that means the run a little bit better because, you know, I'm, <laughs> I was going to lose anyway. So having chat reading for me a little bit was kind of nice. So good job, chat. Woo, positive chat. Ooh. Love you all. All right. So if uh, any, like, I think I have one last thing to say is that uh, check the uh, the schedule and all that stuff. Uh, yep, uh, exclamation for mark. The future R. I, I use the, the command runners. in the... Uh, and like, go follow the runners. They both stream on Twitch. And uh, yeah, I think Definitely that's going to be wrapping it up. If you have any there. I think that's going to be uh, wrapping it up for, for all of us here. So yeah. yeah. Thanks for having us. We'll see you in the, during the next yeah, race. Thank you. That was very fun. All right. So bye bye, everyone. Thanks for watching. <laughs>